Hello, this is Cathy Cassidy and I'm back with a summary Sunday book club. And I want to apologise, I've been AWOL for a bit of a while. Um, what's my excuse for that? Well, it's it's been that kind of a year really. You're kind of, all of us I think have been in the same boat. We've been stepping back into the real world and picking up where we left off, doing real things with real people, which has been great. Um, I know that in in May, I think middle of May, I was I was across in Limoges at the book fair in in France and meeting lots of French readers and my French publishers again, and that felt amazing and just so lovely to be back in the real world. And then um, in June, a couple of weeks later, bam, got COVID. So yeah, it's one of those funny times, isn't it, where we're sort of acting as though everything's okay, but the COVID thing is still out there. So yeah, just tread carefully, whatever you're doing. And uh, yeah, stay well if you can. Um, I wasn't very well with COVID and I did get a bit of bronchitis afterwards, which I often do um, when, when I'm poorly, but I do feel loads better now. And one of the nice things when you aren't well, you know, you can usually still read. So if anything, I probably read more books than I would have done otherwise. But I've read some fantastic books this year and I think that this little summer instalment of Sunday Book Clubs might run over three weeks or so because I have quite a few bits and pieces that I wanted to tell you about. Well, the first one is this book, Malibu Rising, um, by an author called Taylor Jenkins Reid, who is quickly becoming one of my favourite authors for, for an easy read story. Um, she is the author of a book called Daisy Jones and the Six, which I really enjoyed, and also a book called The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. But Malibu Rising possibly is my favourite so far. It's set in the 1980s. It's set in Malibu. It has a really glamorous and cool kind of um, backdrop to it. So you'll come across, you know, rock stars, um, actors, actresses, the surfer crew, the whole kind of that whole fantastic. It's such a summary book. It's also a bit of a thriller with a real mystery at the heart of it, but um, all done very warmly with a lovely kind of human feel good core to it. So thoroughly recommend Malibu Rising. Perfect summer book. Think um, it's going to appeal to lots of people across the board. So that is my number one pick for today. And the next one that I wanted to tell you about, this book, The Woman Who Took a Chance by my fabulous author friend Fiona Gibson, put a huge smile on my face when I read this. It's um, And that's that's kind of not unusual. If you are familiar with Fiona's, Fiona's books, she writes with such a gentle humour, but you will find that you're you're smiling and laughing through through the story. No matter where you are, what you're doing, whatever it is, she will lift your spirits and put a, a lovely smile on your face. Um, and I think we all need that at the moment. So again, a nice summary read, but it's about a flight attendant um, who's reached her middle years, who has quite a complicated life um, and is, is then gifted two tickets for the trip of a lifetime. So who's she going to give the other ticket to? That's her... That's her problem. That's her quest. And it's a bit of a journey for her to work out who are the important people in her life. It's so warm. It's so feel good. And yeah, we all need the smiles as well. So thoroughly recommend The Woman Who Took a Chance by Fiona Gibson. Um, and if you're not familiar with Fiona's books, please check out the others because she's just brilliant. And we all we all need those smiles right now. Um this book, the next, this next book again, it's it's an adult sto or story for um, adults, not for children. It's called Duckling, and it's by um, another author friend, Eve Ainsworth. Eve is a fantastic author for middle grade and especially um, young adults, and this is her first novel for um, you know for for the grown up age group, if you like. And I was fascinated to read it. I was really interested to know what she would do. I love the cover. I love the title. And Duckling is actually the the nickname of the main character, Lucy, in this story. And it's um 
it's not that she's an ugly duckling as such, but it's just that she doesn't fit in with with the rest. You know, she doesn't fit in with the crowd. So it is a reference to that, you know, there once was an ugly duckling who doesn't sort of look like all the other ducks. Um, and yeah, it's, it's so interesting to explore life um, from the viewpoint of somebody who lives their life very differently. Lucy or Duckling, she loves her routine, she loves order, she likes to do things the way she likes to do things, it makes her feel safe, it makes her feel steady. And then suddenly her whole life is turned upside down when a slightly chaotic neighbour asks her to look after her little girl and the neighbour does not come back. So, you know, the then is, you know, this huge kind of dilemma and what's she going to do? How is she going to find find the the missing neighbor how is she going to look after this little girl her whole life is about to change because of this and it's a fantastic study in really how you how you find yourself really really warming to somebody who's actually quite a cool character and i mean cool as in you know a little bit distant a little bit you know somebody who doesn't mix easily and yet by the end of this story we are so rooting for duckling and we so love the way her life has opened up and blossomed. So um, a fabulous debut novel um, in the world of, you know, in, into the adult market for Eve Ainsworth, I really recommend. Great read. Um, the next book, okay, this is um, not going to be such a shocker. I guarantee you will have seen the books by Richard Osman. Uh, you might have seen them on the shelves in the supermarket. You'll have seen them in your bookshop. You'll have seen them online. You might have seen Richard Osman himself because um, I believe he hosts some quiz shows and so on. He's a bit of a celeb. I remember when his first book, the, the Thursday, is it Thursday afternoon? The Thursday Murder Club came out. I remember thinking, Oh, he's already rich and famous. Why does he have to write a book as well? It's not fair. And uh, yeah, it took me quite a while to read that book because of this, this sort of feeling like, you know, he's not an author. Why Why is he doing that? Well, when I did read The Thursday Murder Club, I was blown away because it's such a brilliant story. It's such a brilliant idea. And The Man Who Died Twice is actually book two in the series. So the same characters, the same setup. And I was so, so happy to revisit them. I just love those characters. They're so complicated, so interesting, intriguing. They have all these secrets. Um, you know, to anybody else, they would look like a bunch of OAPs. But no, they are actually, you know, they are so amazing. And, and they're solving mysteries and crimes and having the craziest of adventures. And I was just so sucked into their world. Richard Osman deserves every bit of bestseller fame that he, you know, that he has. I totally recommend you read his books. Absolutely gripping. L great for anyone who loves thrillers and also great for anyone who roots for the underdog because the characters are just that cool. Um, yeah, so Richard Osman the man who died twice. And that brings me to my final recommendation for today. And it is The Animal Lighthouse. This is by a debut author called Anthony Burt. And I think, first of all, the first thing that struck me about this book was the cover. It's so beautiful. It's so bright. And the cover literally tells you what you're going to come across inside a boy pirate, a whole bunch of unlikely animals um, on a desert island. So the animal lighthouse, yeah. Um, and there is a lighthouse on the island. So yeah, we, we've got it all covered with the illustrations here. The fabulous illustrator is called Kira Flood. So um, Kira, you have a new fan. And there are beautiful illustrations all the way through the story, which... I think, really makes a middle grade book extra special. But there was another thing that made this book extra special for me, and that was because the author, Anthony Burt, is an old friend, somebody that I've known for, um, oh, easy, maybe 10, 15 years. And Anthony, I know, has always wanted to be um, a published author and absolutely passionate about writing. 
and um, he wanted to write a children's book and he's he's um, he had shared in the past some of his early ideas and manuscripts with me and I'd given feedback and tried to encourage. Um, but it's about so much more than having a good idea to actually have a good idea that is publishable and that, that publishers will will really want is is a whole different thing and definitely involves a bit of luck as well. But Anthony has done it. And oh, my goodness, has he done it with bells and whistles with this book? The Animal Lighthouse is so good, so shiny, so easy to love. It's ideal for anyone, I'd say kind of seven or eight and upwards. Um, boys will love it, full of adventure and drama. Girls will love it. Um, it's it's just so gripping. There is adventure. There are lovely animals. There's jeopardy. There's danger. There's mystery. Um, yeah, it's it's got everything. And I'm so, so chuffed for Anthony that he's he's first of all got a book published, but second of all, that it's a brilliant one. This is going to be um, a Christmas gift for a lot of people that I know, a lot of young people I know in this age group this year. And I totally would, would um, suggest that anyone with, I don't know, the eight to 12 year old range, age range in your family or friends, those kids would love this book for a summer holiday read. So yeah, check it out. A new author, but it's not going to be the last you hear of him. Far from it. So those are my picks for today. Um, I will be back next week and I will have some more suggestions and recommendations for you because, as I said, I've done a lot of reading so far this year and there are some amazing books out there and some amazing books in the pipeline too. So enjoy your summer. I'm actually recording this indoors because it's so hot out there. I thought I would literally melt. Um, but later on, I'm lucky these days. I only live five or ten minutes walk from from the sea. So later on, when it gets a little bit cooler, I may well walk down and have a swim in the sea um, with my daughter, perhaps. And, you know, that is the perfect end to a lovely day. But it's so nice to be back um, chatting away with you, telling you about my favourite books. Please do leave a comment on the YouTube channel or share the link or whatever. But leave me a comment and tell me how you're getting on, how your year has been so far um, and any books that you would like to recommend. And of course, any questions that you have too, because I'll, I promise I'll do my best to answer them. And thank you for being so patient. Thank you for tuning in and watching. And it's so nice to see you again, even if it's just through the prism of YouTube. But yeah, hi, and I'll see you next week too. Take care.